right now, the so-called gay discrimination bill in, it, it is now vetoed in Arizona. But well, the reason why, money also provides momentum for another fast-moving issue, legalizing marijuana. Tonight, we explore. And then the Ukraine, on the brink of civil war with Russia mounting troops on the border this the same week. The U.S. calls for dramatic cuts to the defense budget and to our military, prompting the very same question, does might make right on the international stage? And later, Ben Affleck and Seth Rogen on Capitol Hill. Well, we're going to talk about why many celebrities who've gone before the Klieg legs don't necessarily do so well when it's all said and done. Tonight, we discuss. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Thursday evening, February 27th. And we start in Arizona, of course, which was kind of center of the political universe this week here. All eyes been focused there over that controversial bill that would have allowed businesses to deny services to gays and lesbians based solely on religious objections. Well, last night, Republican Governor Jan Brewer vetoed the law after complaints from all across the political spectrum, including some lawmakers who even voted for the bill and lots and lots of businesses. And it was that threat that companies would stop doing business in the state of Arizona, coupled with the risk of losing, among other things, the Super Bowl next year, that the governor, Ms. Brewer, cited the reason for her veto. Now, among those who called for a veto, the NFL, as I mentioned, including the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Apple Computer, American Express, American Airlines, Delta, Alaska Airlines, I can keep going on, Marriott Hotels, even Yelp. That's right, the online review site for food. Well, the risk of losing the businesses and hurting an economy, obviously a powerful force in politics. And so, it's the prospect or gaining business and revenue. Now, one cited today in a Times piece, a social issue where minds may be changing, believe it or not, just as fast, if not even faster than they did on gay rights, something we would have thought was unthinkable even a couple years ago, the idea of legalizing marijuana. Well, the Times reporting on the selling point of marijuana tax revenues, 134 million bucks just this year alone in Colorado, which is a lot higher than what was projected, and other states like Rhode Island, watching real closely. Fiscal news from Colorado, it reports, is sure to help legislation in the ocean state to legalize the drug because they're in such budget problems. Now, it's a point the columnist Gail Collins summed up today in her piece, saying in the United States, victory really arrives on the glorious day when the people with the money decide discrimination is bad for business. Or, if expand her thought to marijuana, when the people with money and lawmakers who watch the bottom line decide legalization is good for business. We're looking forward to hearing what tonight's panel has to say out of all this. And joining us, Jonathan Yidden. He's from the Democratic consultant firm, The Advance Group. Dominic Carter, of course, political journalist and author. Chris Shea, he's the one and only former Republican congressman from Connecticut, now a distinguished fellow, not just a fellow, but a distinguished one in public service at the University of New Haven. And Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Um, it is amazing when, in the naked truth, what happened in Arizona. We saw it all in real time. All of a sudden, the NFL says, hey, remember, as you mentioned, Dominic, what happened when MLK Day, uh, they wouldn't recognize it. They lost the Super Bowl a decade ago. Now, all of a sudden, you guys could lose it because of what this cockamamie idea that they were thinking of doing over there. And magically, magically, the governor, even some of the people who voted for it in the legislature said, never mind. And they quickly vetoed the thing, um, in addition to all the business. Your prediction, you, you're a very young, hale and hearty gentleman here. Five years from now, 10 years from now, will more states than not be in the process or have already legalized marijuana because of the effect on the bottom line? Yes. Really? Yep. Could you have ever imagined that even five years ago? Um, I didn't think about it. Yeah. Uh, Andrew? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, what we've seen from Colorado so far, it, there hasn't been a breakdown in, in you know, societal norms as a result of legalizing it. Something else we heard, by the way, after gay marriage was approved in a lot of different states, the sky hasn't fallen yep. the, uh, and that sort of thing. And the numbers are really quite extraordinary. And there are plenty of states you could tax it at a higher rate than you taxed it in Colorado. I mean, the, to me, the really big point was Rhode Island and that quote from some state lawmakers there. There's a movement there to get it legalized perhaps as early as this year. They want that tax revenue. Rhode Island needs tax revenue from somewhere. May as well get it. 
Uh, it's a commodity that people are already buying, but the that's state's not is. benefiting. That's right. That's exactly what it is. It's a commodity people are already buying. We see it being that's done successfully in Colorado right now in a contained environment. And uh, it's sort of, yeah, the guinea pig for the rest of the country. But sure, I mean, that's we might as well point. take advantage of uh, what's already being out there and start to tax, uh, tax it and regulate it to ensure that it's done properly and safely, and you're seeing that now in Colorado. Everyone's yeah. looking at Colorado as a successful experiment, but I don't know if it's gonna move as fast as these gentlemen say. I just don't know. I don't know politically if, if some in the country are ready for it as fast as well, Do you remember, Dominic, where the expression jump the shark came from? Remember when Fonzie yeah. was on water mm -hmm, skis mm -hmm. with a leather jacket that's and right. he jumped the thing in, and it became that seminal moment where people say, oh, that's when officially that show went off the rails. And now they apply it to everything. Well, for me, this morning, it was just like when Joe Biden went either off script or was playing whatever you believe here on the gay mm -hmm. marriage front. All of a sudden it got out there and nobody freaked out that much in the, in the next day or two. And all of a sudden it became politically safe, if not even smart to get on that bandwagon. Well, yep. this morning, turn on the local network news here, and it was on GMA, and they're doing this story about, of all things, a Girl Scout um, <laughs> who's selling cookies, but she's going I in front it. of a marijuana dispensary <laughs> because she says, these guys got the munchies, all right? Yeah. Now, for me, I don't know if we got that video here, but <laughs> it, the, the idea that the clip plays, and you see all the guys heading out, <laughs> And then they cut back to the anchor desk from this, I guess, enterprising young girl. And the idea that this would have been fine for the anchors to be, who, trust me, they're not exactly, you know, uh, going to take any political or societal risks here. I think we even have the clip. Look at the reaction from a network safe morning pro, what their reaction is to a girl selling girl sack cookies out of a place where people are buying weed. Take a listen. <laughs> Future corporate titans. All right, what would you guys say? I'd do Captain Crunch, I think. You would? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Wow, I have no idea, George. I, it look, business is business. You, know? yeah, look, business yeah, is right. business. you don't need an MBA to know. Like, yeah. demographics are everything. Supply and demand. Right. Yeah, and to me, like this. It went from, oh my God, we got heathens in, in uh, Washington and Colorado contemplating, and now you got the morning anchors here who wouldn't come within 50 feet of something controversial making jokes here about, hey, you know, if I had a couple, if I had the munchies after buying a, you know, a whatever, how much, I'm going to be buying, I'll go for, uh, what is it, the Thin Mints, or I'm going to go for uh, the Tagalongs, or I'm going to go for go whatever. For the but You're it's going safe, for the it's mints, safe yeah. to say now, because it's illegal at one point. But it's like safe, this, Jonathan. Yeah, but it's safe. Like this. Maybe these guys were meaning to say it all along, but they just couldn't now. I mean, it's safe to do it now. So I, did, I did a story when I was working in Texas, which was, what, eight years ago, uh, about a guy who was busted for marijuana. He was busted with a joint on him. And I went on the air, and I said he was arrested with, for holding a marijuana cigarette. I was afraid to say joint on the air just because it would sound a little too colloquial. And now, I mean, now that you're, you've got you George Stephanopoulos, you come out you've, got George <laughs> you've got George Stephanopoulos making jokes on Good Morning America. I mean, it really has been a dramatic turn. Good segue, though. And what's the impact on crime going to be? Uh, they and, say and at least. They say at least. And again, and I, and I totally grant you, it's been such a small sample of time, right. but it's been negligible. A and law no, enforcement. No, no. But I would think it would go down. Maybe because they're less motivated to get into trouble. But if anyone thought that this was going to be some huge corruptible thing, but I think the takeaway is your Jan Brewer, a week ago, she was lining up with the legislature, okay? But she saw the math and said, Jesus, I lose some anchor, you know, corporate, uh, yeah. you know, uh, basically sh uh, shareholders in my communities, in my state, they're not going to come do business. I'm going to lose the Super Bowl? No way. Money does trump politics, doesn't yeah. it? Well, but uh, the crime's going to go down with marijuana being legal. And I can tell you this, though. What a bad bill for this state. What a bad bill for the Republican Party. And more importantly... And fair Fristle, McCain and Flake came out before. I, it was really popular, and they condemned it here, to be fair to those but, two But still, it's yeah. thank you for being yeah. fair to them. But, but, but the other thing that I'm thinking of is that um, there is a legitimate concern about illegal immigration, and that's even going to get discredited 
the legitimate concern because they're going to say, these folks in Arizona, they go after immigrants and they go at, uh, so. But I'll tell you one thing, though. What this is, is it provides ammo for these moderate Republicans that voted for Medicaid expansion and also voted for this. None of them wanted to vote for this, but they had to because they're sco so scared that they're going to get a primary from the right, and who makes up the electorate in a, Demo in a Republican primary? And they're worried these Tea Party wackos are going are gonna to knock them off. But you know what? I think there's now this new brand. If somebody sits back and say, all right, if I just look at the last few years, it used to be dangerous to be in favor of casinos, okay? Now, please, every state's fighting to get it. Sure. Uh, gay marriage. Again, you can make the argument, people do what they do in their own bedroom. I'm not going to try and bring, bring government into theirs. And that's a conservative, safe position that you can take here to keep government out of your lives. Same thing with this. And God knows it helps the bottom line of the state. You don't have to do unpopular cuts. You can make an argument that what we've seen the last few years can give cover if you can frame positions in the fact that you're keeping government out and um, you're also at the same thing being fiscally prudent. Believe it or not, you know, I, I think it's, conservatives it's, it's, might it's, find... It's the odd place in the political spectrum where the libertarian argument and the progressive argument actually meet up. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, when we come back here, um, everything it takes a lot to surprise anybody, but the idea that a governor is trying to pick his opponent from the other party and working with people from that party to pick his uh, general election opponent, well, some are saying that's what's happening in the state of New York. We'll talk about that and other headlines from the Empire State after this.